Hi. In this video, you're going to learn how to use the Excel borehole data entry template for Groundhog Professional. So let's get started. Fire Groundhog up and head for the main menu. Under Import, there's an option to enter boreholes or locations using Groundhog Excel template. The Excel template is embedded or shipped within the Groundhog installation, so you should be able to access it directly from here. See the previous video if you want to learn how to install this template directly into Excel itself. So I'll just go ahead and click on that, and that should fire the template up using Excel. Because this is a template, there's no danger that you can corrupt the formatting, because when you save this out, it will be saved out as an Excel spreadsheet rather than a template. The template is arranged as a series of tabs, each of which is designed to capture particular information about your borehole data or your location data. But the first sheet you should see is a set of basic instructions. So take a moment just to familiarize yourself with those. Let's get started entering some data. The first thing I'm going to do is click through to the project tab. And what you'll notice is that each tab has a name and then a hyphen and then a four letter code or suffix. This is because the template is designed to make it easy to get your data in through the template and then out to a UK standard AGS data format file. So throughout the template, and the example here is in the tabs, you will see that the AGS um, value for that particular worksheet, which maps through to the AGS group, is provided as, a, as a, an aid memoir. The PROJ worksheet is a little bit different to all the others, as you'll see in a moment. Just start typing and just fill out the values. What you'll notice straight away is that some fields are highlighted in different colors. Yellow fields are the AGS mandatory fields. Green fields are the highly desirable fields, but you can fill in whichever data you have. And I'm just putting in dummy values for these. Just fill out as much information as you like. Next, we'll move on to the locations. Now, this is an important worksheet because everything else hangs off this. So there's no need to fill out the project worksheet if you don't have project information or you don't need to enter it at this point. But the locations table is the locations worksheet is critical. Everything across the worksheet and across the entire template is based on what we call the primary key, which is the location identifier or in AGS terms, the, the local ID. And what you can see is this first column here, which is highlighted in, in yellow is the location ID. And that's going to act as your primary key as you work through each individual tab. So it's important to make sure that you're using unique values here. And in the locations or loca worksheet, every row within the data entry area represents one location or one borehole. So I'm just going to start typing some stuff in here. Now, what you will see is that there are several header rows in each worksheet, and these are designed to guide or aid you in understanding what information should go in. And it will also show you how that relates to the AGS data standard. So I've entered a value for my first borehole, BH1. Um, and then I can fill out as, as many or as few of the additional fields as I like. What you will find with some of the fields is they are key, keyed to validation lists. So if you click into this location type cell, you can see a little down arrow, which will give you access to a little validation dictionary. It's up to you whether you use this. You can type free text or you can select from the preset list. And I'll show you where those lists exist in a moment. Easting and northing is just your grid reference. So that um, Groundhog is agnostic of any particular projection system or grid system. So those are just either your national grid or your county grid or your site grid. It doesn't really matter. Level is your ground level or elevation value. Uh, and I'm not going to fill out all of these forms all of these fields, but you get the general idea. Over here on the right, there are three special columns, which are technically not part of the local group of AGS. They're part of the HDPH or the whole information table. Uh, these are here just to basically uh, combine or concatenate the information you need potentially for a trial pit into one sheet so that we can simplify. So you can put in sort of plant excavation method, length and width. And if I want to put in a second borehole, just make sure here I'm entering BH2 for borehole 2. Obviously, you can have your own naming scheme. 
And then it's just a case of going through each individual sheet and entering the downhaul information that relates to um, each of these uh, locations. I'm just going to save the worksheet out. Groundhog template demo. And note here that this is uh, coming out as XLSX. So this is the Excel workbook. So you're in no peril here. There's no danger of corrupting the original template. It will always come out as a copy. Next, I'm heading for the geology tab. So this is where I put my um, stratum descriptions or geological interpretation in. Um, this could be, um, again, it's geared up for the AGS standard, but you can use this however you like, as we'll see in a moment. Location ID, um, if I click into this cell here, you can see it takes the form of a drop down list. There's a slight quirk of Excel and the way the template is set up that this, if you only have a few entries in the, pro in the locations worksheet, this will initially appear blank. That's because the values are slightly above where the drop down appears by default. So you just need to scroll up a little to see those if you've only got a handful of boreholes. So this gives you a handy quick access to the unique IDs you've already put in your locations table. Again, this, this is free text, so I can actually type whatever I like into there. But if I click away, you can see it will warn me that I'm using a location ID that is not in the locations table. So I can click yes to override that. But obviously what that means is that effectively my, my geology entry here is isolated. It's not connected to a primary key of an actual location. So I'm just going to set that back to BH1. Next, I'll just fill in a couple of intervals for this just to show you the basics. So top depth always starts at zero. So this is depth down the hole and base depth. Let's see. This is in meters, 2.5. You can see here that there's information about units and an example. Um, and general description, um, you can type in whatever you like into here, and that's no problem at all. So you can use that for your description or even for your geology uh, code if you like. You can use it however you want. But it also, again, like some of the other fields, is linked to a validation list. So you can pick from that. Um, so I'm actually going to I'm going to mimic the uh, the example used in the example row of the header. And this column here, legend code, if you're working into AGS standard, legend code is a thing. It's a three digit code which maps to a particular lithological legend um, which Groundhog ships with. So this will help you with your graphical log display or log reports. Um, and again, you can just pick from this list. I'll show you where this list exists in a moment so that you can, you can uh, refer to that and look things up. But for this demo, I'm just going to go with the, uh, with the example from the example header row. The additional fields, again, these are AGS standard fields, but you can use them however you want. So if we wanted to put stratigraphy in here, we can put a value in there. The, these are not predefined. There's no pick list or lookup list for these. These are just free text, so you can use whatever scheme you like for those. If I then go to my next interval in borehole one, so I'm doing multiple rows for BH1 here down the hole. Next one starts at 2.5 at the base of the clay. And I'm going to put that to 7.8, for example, in meters again. Um, I'm just going to enter nonsense for this just to show the, the basics. So I just pick my codes here. Um, I don't have to fill in every field for every row, so you can skip rows if you don't have information. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Uh, but just make sure you are filling out this location ID field here, or you're going to have problems once you import it to Groundhog. So that's really the basics of the data entry, and I'll just skip through the other worksheets to, to show you what's available. So uh, samples. Um, again, just here, uh, an opportunity to put your sample information in. Again, important to key it by the primary uh, key or the idea of the borehole itself. Um, and then some of the fields you might find, like sample type, is also a controlled by a validation list, but you can override that and type free text. It's not a problem. Uh, you've got your, your backfill. And again, always, always put your key it to your borehole um, and then enter as much information as you've got. Legend code again, this is a validation list based on typical backfill, um, but you can put in whatever you like there, or you could just choose to use a description field. Uh, in a later video, you'll see how this information comes out in a log template. 
installation or pipe information again key to your borehole and then you've got validation for um, type as well which you can pick from the list or, or override then you've got your water strike so in terms of ags this this uh, worksheet actually merges two groups the wstg and the wstd groups um, and again key to your your borehole uh, put in the, the strike depth um, and then you can do a rest level as well or a post um, so there might be two different values um, we don't have full support for monitoring yet so this will just be one one rest level you can put it here and if you want the number of minutes you waited for that penetration test or ISPT in AGS terms is the most complicated sheet so just take your time with this one again key to the ID I'll go through and fill a few of these out so this gives you the depth of the actual test um, and then I'm just going to use the values from the example header just to show you what happens here so these some of these are free text but you can see here there's a couple of fields which are automatic which we'll see in a, in a moment you can put your hammer serial number in if you wish or some metadata about the, the actual calibration um, and then you can put your seating and test drive um, information in here and you can see as I do this that it actually is auto populating the um, the reported result and it should also be updating um, the the NVAL uh, so you can override these and enter them manually if you wish but it's just there as a convenience just so finally I'm just going to show this uh, last tab here so this worksheet here is is not editable um, and this is the data validation list so this is where when you hit a drop down um, and it's given you suggestions like sample type pipe type or geology legend codes this is where that information is coming from so it's a handy reference there to see particularly for the for the AGS legend codes as a lookup this worksheet says in bold do not edit um, so it's a protected worksheet as are all the other worksheets within Groundhog so you can't edit the headers you can't edit the field names and so on that's for a reason because Groundhog ships with predefined templates for borehole log reports that expect things to be in a certain way but if you're confident and you know what you're doing with Excel you can actually edit these um, so if you need to you could just right click on the tab and unprotect the sheet it's not password protected so you can do that and then you can edit anything you like but just beware um, with that once you get into that territory it may no longer be completely compatible with Groundhog depending how what types of edits you make and how fully you understand so if you want to do that just take a bit of time to look at the way the sheets have been organized and the header fields and um, follow that design structure if you need to change the name of anything or add additional fields or change the, the validation lists so that's the basics of the data entry once you're done just save uh, save as you go along and in the next video I'll show you what that data looks like when you bring it into Groundhog <laughs>